Hi everyone, good morning and how are you today? I hope you had a good night. Again, we're continuing with our review on lesson 11 and we're going to see the last two units today. Now today, let us look at another topic in lesson 11. Today, let us look at mass. Now, let us do this quick exercise. Which measurements do we use to check for heavy or light? What is the measurement? The one we use to check heavy or light. Do you remember? Mass. That is the one we use to check for heavy or light. Mass. What about the units for mass? Can you remember the units for mass? Good job. Units for mass are grams for light objects and kilograms for heavy objects. All right, students, now we know that mass is measuring in grams and kilograms. We know that the units for mass are grams and kilograms. So let us find out which unit is bigger. Is it gram or is it kilogram? And the second thing we will do here is how can we convert from gram to kilogram and from kilogram to grams? How can we convert? Which one is bigger? How can we convert? Those are the two things that we will do in this uh, slide. Now, can you see the block for grams in our mass blocks? Can you see the block for gram? Which is bigger, grams block or kilograms block? The grams block is smaller. But look at the kilograms. It is a bigger block. So that means the kilograms is the bigger unit. Okay? Kilograms is the bigger unit. Now let us see how we can convert from gram to kilogram and from kilogram to gram. How can we convert from gram to kilogram? First, we must remember that 1,000 gram is equal to to one kilogram don't forget this because if you have to convert you will use this model 1000 gram is equal to one kilogram but the question is am i supposed to divide to convert or am i supposed to multiply when do you divide when you want to convert and when do you multiply now we will find out to convert kilogram to gram Remember, kilogram is a big unit. Gram is a small unit. So now I am going from kilogram to gram. I am going from big to small unit. I have to multiply. Whenever you want to go from big unit, kilogram, to small unit, gram, you will multiply. But whenever you want to go from gram to kilogram, that is gram, small unit to kilogram big unit you have to divide divide by what 1000 and multiply by what 1000 so now you know when you are supposed to multiply and when you're supposed to divide so if i say to you convert this to kilogram what will you do convert gram to kilogram that is small unit to big unit then what comes to your mind? I have to divide by 1,000. What about convert kilogram to gram? What comes to your mind? I have to multiply. Okay, students, I have in the picture here an instrument. Can you say to me what this instrument measures? Or what exactly is this instrument? Good. The instrument measures mass. It is an instrument for measuring mass. And what is the name of the instrument? The name of the instrument is a measuring scale. Good. Now here we are going to see how we can read the measurements on a scale. This scale has an object on it and we want to see what the measurement is. But first remember... If you look at the scale, you can see some numbers there. 
and you can also see some lines on the scale. Now, the first thing I want you to know is the single numbers. Those numbers on the scale, one, two, three, and four, they are the single numbers on the scale. They are measuring in kilograms. That means one is equal to one kilogram, two is equal to two kilograms, three is equal to three kilograms, and four is equal to four kilograms. What about the 500s? You can see we have 500, 500. Now the 500s, they are measuring gram, okay? They are measuring gram. And also what about the line in the middle? If you see the line in the middle of all the numbers, they are four lines each. For example, let us look at the line between 0 and 500. How many lines? four lines now you must know that each of the line in the middle of the numbers they are measuring 100 grams each each of those lines they are measuring 100 grams each so from zero let us count 100 up to 500 we have 100 grams the first line second line is 200 grams third line is 300 grams fourth line 400 grams and the fifth one where we have 500 is 500 grams now if we count from after 500 to 1 we will have 600 grams the next one 700 grams the next line 800 next is 900 and can you see that on the one uh, we don't have 1000 grams but we have one on the big line why because 1000 grams is the same as one kilogram so remember that 1000 gram is the same thing as one kilogram now let us read this scale let us see what we have the measurement of this scale there is something on top of the scale what is the measurement the first thing you will do check the number that the arrow is pointing to can you see that arrow from the middle up to somewhere around uh, it's not getting to four it is before 500 but already it is after three so you will check and you will read either in kilograms or you read in grams or you can read in kilograms and grams together so for this one the measurement on this scale now is already it's past three so that is three kilograms now let us count how many lines after three one two three and four and remember each line is 100 grams so four lines now is 400 grams now the measurement we can say is 3.4 kilograms if we want to say in kilograms or in grams we can convert three to gr grams that's we can convert three kilogram we convert it to gram we say 3000 gram then plus the 400 gram will be 3,400 grams. And we can also say the measurement is 3 kilograms and 400 grams. Now let's go on to unit 8, still on lesson 11. Now let's do this quick exercise again. Which type of measurements can we use to check if something is plenty or little which measurements do you remember good job volume we use volume to see if it is plenty or if something is little then what about for measuring volume what are the units i know you should remember that liters and milliliters liters for plenty quantity milliliters for smaller quantity now students we now know that the units of volume is milliliters and liters but which one is bigger which unit is bigger that will make us to go back to our block our volume block and the second thing we will look how can we convert after we see which one is bigger we will see how can we convert from milliliter to liter and from liter to milliliter now let us look at our volume block can you see the block 
Look at milliliters. Is it in a smaller or bigger block? Look. Milliliters has a smaller block, of course. And for liters, liters has the bigger block. So now tell me, which of the two units is bigger? Milliliters or liters? Good job. Liters is bigger. Now to our second question. How can we convert from milliliter to liter and from liter to milliliter? Like when you have convert 5,000 liters to milliliter or 5,000 milliliters to liter. What will you do in that kind of situation? First thing you must remember is... 1,000 milliliter make 1 liter. 1,000 milliliters make 1 liter. Okay? Now, how can we now convert from milliliter to liter? No, first, let us see how we convert from liter to milliliter first. From liter to milliliter. What are we going to do? If we have a, a, an exercise, and you are told to convert liter to milliliter. That means you are told to convert big unit to small unit. That means we are moving from the big block to the small block. We have to multiply from big block to small block. We multiply. What about if we have to convert from milliliter to liter? What about milliliter to liter? What are we going to do? Convert from milliliter to liter. That means you are converting from small block to big block. And in that case, you have to divide. You have to divide. Okay? So, what are you going to divide by? By 1,000. And what also will you multiply? By 1,000. Now, finally, students, let us try this. We will fill in the space and we'll use the appropriate measure and unit. We'll use the appropriate measure. The measure should be length, mass, or volume. That's the one you will put in the first spaces. And then the unit is, if it is the unit for length you chose, then you pick one unit from length. If the measure you chose is volume, you have to pick the appropriate unit from volume let's try the first one then you will understand the remaining ones now this question says we have a foot the dash of my foot can be measured in dash what is the measure the dash what measure will i fill in the length that's the correct measure of my foot can be measured in now what units of length will i put in centimeters good job so the length of my foot can be measured in centimeters and the second one the dash of the vegetables can be measured in dash what measure and what unit the measure should be mass and the units should be gram or kilogram kilogram the mass of the vegetables can be measured in kilograms. Okay, now the next one. The dash of the water can be measured in dash. What is the le uh, what measure should we use for that? Volume. Good, that's the proper measure. The volume of the water can be measured in, and then which unit are we going to choose? Milliliter or liter? Milliliters. The volume of the water can be measured in milliliters. Now that's the answer for the insects. The length of the insects can be measured in millimeters. And finally, the cupcakes. The, what measure are we going to use for cupcakes? The mass of the cupcakes can be measured in grams. Good job. So we've come to the end of our review of lesson 11. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions about the lesson, please send me your questions on Class Dojo and I will send you the answers. Take care of yourselves and have a great day. Bye.